Here's the final lesson for the fall semester. It's actually things you already know. You already know how to evaluate a derivative at a given value on your calculator, but it's with a completely new set of functions. So I just want to give you the opportunity to practice entering transcendental functions into your calculator. I know you've had lots of practice at that in the last lessons, but I'm going to go through this fairly quickly because I know that this is something that you already know how to do. You can pause at any time and you will need to pause often to enter things into your calculator and all that kind of stuff and then you can just start the video again after that. So the very first example is given the function y equals e to the x cubed find the derivative at x equal 2. So remember we always put the function into y1, and this is what it should look like when you get it in there, and then you're going to hit second mode, that takes you to the home screen, you choose math, and under the menu, number 8 brings up n deriv, alright, and so once you get to n deriv, then you're going to hit your vars button, the right arrow button once, and enter twice, and what that does is that puts y1 into the open parentheses on n deriv. Remember after that you're going to enter a comma then an x that tells the calculator with respect to what variable. You'll then put another comma and then the x value that the, you want the derivative evaluated at and we were told to evaluate it at x equal 2. You have to remember to put the closing parentheses there. Then you'll hit enter and it will give you back the slope of the tangent line to that function at x equals 2. So the derivative of this function at x equals 2 is this value and you must be accurate to, tr to three decimal places. So let's do some more practice on exponential functions. Here's just a general exponential function. So you'll need to remember to put parentheses around your 1 fourth and then your up caret and then it is being raised to a power of x to the fifth, so you're going to put that into y1, you'll hit your second and quit button to go back to the home screen, you'll hit math and choose number 8, it'll give you n deriv with an open parentheses, hit your vars button, do what you need to to put this as y1 into your home screen, then comma, then x, then comma, then 2, then close parentheses, and this should be the value that it gives you back. Now, this means something, so be very careful because your calculator is only doing what you tell it to do. You have to interpret the results that it gives you, and this says that there are 18 zeros before you get a 6. And trust me, if there are 18 zeros, then this slope is 0. All right, and here is the next example. Here we have e to the 3x to the fifth minus 12x squared plus pi. And so you're going to put that into y1. You'll hit the e button, and the up caret and the open parentheses will be there. Then you enter the rest of the information and hit quit. Go to the home screen, bring up n deriv, and bring up y1 and put it in the open parentheses. Then hit comma then x, then comma, then 2, and close parentheses. Now this result that you're going to get says that there are 24 places before you hit your decimal place. And I've said in the past that we don't do times 10 to the whatever. In this case, I'm going to change my mind. They're really not going to expect us to list 24 places and then a decimal and be accurate to three decimal places. I frankly have never seen anything this big as the result of any work on the actual AP test, but I wanted you to know there's a difference between a negative and a positive E value. This just tells you how many places you're going to move that decimal point. If it's positive, you're moving it that many places to the right. If it's negative, you're going to move it that many places to the left. So it would be perfectly fine to give your answer in this form, but again, I've never seen that necessary on the AP exam. 
So a couple more examples now that involve natural log. So we have y equals the natural log of the absolute value of the quantity 4 minus 2x. Remember, you can pull up absolute value by hitting that catalog button, and it's the first thing in your catalog. So you're going to hit the natural log button. It'll give you an open parentheses. Hit the catalog button, and then just hit, hit enter, and that will put ABS with an open parentheses there. You put the 4 minus 2x in and close the parentheses, and then pull up in deriv, put your function in there as y1. Remember your commas. We're still evaluating at x equal 2 for our derivative, and this says that the slope of the tangent line for this function at x equal 2 is 0. Here's one that's a little more complicated. This is one where you're going to have to be very, very careful with all of your parentheses. You need to put your numerator function in its own parentheses and your denominator function in its own parentheses. And then you're going to have all these parentheses inside. You're going to have this, and then you're going to have x, and then you're going to raise that to the 1 third. So this is what that would look like when you enter that into y1 and then go forward with this step and this should be your result. This says the slope of the tangent line, accurate to three decimal places, for this function at x equal 2 is 1.206. Now we're going to move forward and we're going to evaluate the definite integral using your calculator as well. So this says find the exact area. This won't be total area. So if you get a calculator active question that asks for total area, you may have to actually break your interval up and make sure you're subtracting any negative area. So we want the exact area between the graph of the function and the horizontal axis. That's this definite integral over this interval. So the first step in the process is the same. You're going to very carefully put the function into y1, then return to the home screen. This time you're going to select math, but you're going to select number 9 out of the menu, and that's, that should bring up FNINT with an open parentheses. Using the same process for entering the function, you hit VARS, you hit the right arrow, you hit enter twice, then you're going to have your function entered in there and you're telling your calculator to evaluate the definite integral. The difference here as well, you still need to tell your calculator with respect to what variable, and now you're going to hit a comma and you're going to put your lower limit, comma your upper limit, and close parentheses. Then when you hit enter, the value that it gives you back is the accumulated where negative area has been subtracted from any positive area. This is the accumulated area in the plane beneath the function you put here over this x interval. So that definite integral, accurate to three decimal places, you should get 0 0.780. Now here's some more practice for you. Here's a definite integral using just a general transcendental function. So you can pause the video at any time and enter all this and, and check your work. Remember, this means we have six decimal places, right? And so we're going to have five zeros in front of that nine. So for all practical purposes, that's zero, accurate to three decimal places. Here is that kind of ugly looking function that we took the derivative of before. Here we're going to find the accumulated area between 7 and 8 on that function. Be very careful putting that into y1. You should get this for the answer, and you want to record that answer accurate to three decimal places. And finally, these two functions, from 0 to pi over 4 underneath this function, or in between this function and the horizontal axis, there's the value that you get accurate to three decimal places, and for that natural log function, and we remember natural log, and then you hit the catalog, right, and just hit enter, and that will put absolute value there for you. And so we're integrating that over the interval from 3 to 5, and this should be the answer that you get, and there we are, accurate to three decimal places. 
So you can find area in the graph screen as well, just like I said last time when we did this before for our other types of functions, but the graph screen is not always accurate to three decimal places. Doing it in the home screen, you are guaranteed that that result is accurate to three decimal places. All right, so I know I kind of sped through that, but I realized that you just need to pause the video, enter the information, double check your work, and then move on. So there we are. There's your final lesson for the fall semester. Come to class next time. We'll do some more practice using your calculator on transcendental functions, and then we'll get ready for the transcendentals exam.